Hi, I'm Carol Berkman and welcome to my YouTube channel. I do acrylic pour paintings on this channel. I do other paintings as well, but this YouTube channel is specifically for acrylic pour paintings. Please watch, you might find it very informative and fun. And if you like what you see, give me a like, share it, and subscribe, it's free. Carol Berkman here, hey, I'm back. I've got my canvas all gessoed. It's still damp. Uh, yeah, you can see the brush marks, but hopefully I'll have enough paint here to cover it. So I checked my consistencies and I found my gloss black, which was the apple barrel, and my Caribbean. This was real thin, too thin to use. <clears throat> so I added some of the um, white chalky finish paint. Let me just grab this. <clears throat> the American Decor chalky finish paint in white. And I did that till I could get it to thicken up because wow, it was sinking. It's still running off kind of thin. And I was hoping that it would be thickened by now. Maybe I wasn't paying attention and I did double the uh, pouring mediums on that two to one. That would account for that thinness. Although, although those paints are not as heavy bodied, they're still really pretty good quality paints. So that one is suspiciously thin. Probably my problem. I probably did something wrong. I'm going to take a little of this that I've mixed up because I've checked the consistency on this. And even though they're in a bottle, I do like to take them out and check the consistencies just to make sure. So this one is still a little thin. I'll put some of this in here. Let's see if we can get a thicker consistency. It's a little better. So I'll go with it. Now the Payne's Gray was the thickest, leaves a mound on a mound. The silver is perfect. It does leave a mound, but it sinks fairly quickly. I do think this one's a little thicker, but I'm going to put it down in the center as a pillow. My gloss black's a little thin, which is okay because I'm going to use it as a pouring aid. And although I put gesso down, I'm still going to put a little bit of this black out around the sides. So here we go. So I will use the gloss black because I know it's thin as a flow aid when I do need to tilt. I may have a handy dandy tool here. So I'm just going to smooth this out. Even though I did put the gesso down so I wouldn't have to worry about my corners, they still need to be covered, I think. And this gloss black is so much prettier. It gives it that nice sheen. And I am pleased with this product because I did a pour with it and it dried to a nice glossy finish. One of them I had a little boo-boos after the fact where a little gnat had landed in it. And I didn't leave the gnat as part of the painting. I plucked it up and it marred it. And there were a couple other places, I guess, that got touched when I was uh, moving it. There was a lump, a lump, and I tried to pick it out with the tweezers, which you want to do that while it's wet, not when it's 
still wet but almost dry. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start with some Payne's Gray in the center. Still a little thick. I'm going to thin it just a bit. This is water and Floetrol. 90% water, 10% Floetrol. And the reason that's better than a straight water, you can use straight water. But the reason that's better is with the flow trough, you have a little bit of that conditioner in there. And I think it just really kind of helps to smooth it. And this is what I didn't want to do. Spend my time mixing this paint. But your consistencies, they are important. I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to put a puddle down in the center, and it's what we call a pillow, a little pillow, and put my little pipe down. I'm going to get another little tool that I like. This little one. I'm going to pour a little bit more of this Payne's Gray. Let it hit this little pipe and kind of go around the edge. So I like to create that little suction. This looks like I'm dripping some of this Payne's Gray. Now you can see the difference between the black and the Payne's Gray. Now that I've got this down and I've got some of this paint up around my little PVC pipe that was cut off, I could use a cookie cutter, anything you can think of that gives you that open. You'll see other videos of open cup where you can take a cup like this and cut it off. Problem is, is it moves and it will, once you put enough paint in it, it will move. This has got weight. It's not moving. Okay, so I got that all set up. I'm going to have a little drink here. We're pouring one down and I'm pouring a little another one down. This is a nice strawberry gin. A little splash of some fruit juice something and sparkling water. Okay, now that I've got that ready to go, I'm going to put in some of my blue. And I'm going to put in a little of this white. Check my turquoise here. Hopefully it's thickened just a bit. Still feels a little thin, but I'm going to go with it. That looked like some of it sunk. 
And as far red, I did add just a little tiny, tiny bit of blue to give it just more of a purpley red cast. Still very red. Go for this silver. I should have put the silver first and then the red. Oh well. I do like to put silver with white. My blue. And the idea is, once I fill this up, I will lift it up a little at a time and let it disperse. Ooh. Maybe this color's gotten heavier than I think. Oh well, seemed to have sunk there. I think I'm going to finish off with a little Payne's Gray. Okay. I'm going to let the magic happen here in just a moment. So I'm going to lift up slightly. Ooh, I see some air bubbles. I'm going to pop those air bubbles real quick. Okay. The idea is just to lift it up. Don't break the paint seal. Paint will come up under it. out a bit, back a bit, over a bit, and you can see it's dispersing more on this side, so hopefully we'll get some of it over here on this side to come out. Wow, I think that satin enamel paint is really, really reacting. We'll torch this side to see what else I get over here. Okay. So I'm really getting a ton of cluster cells over here. I'm just tilting gently back and forth to let this disperse out. My paint's gray isn't looking as beautiful and blue as I wanted. I may have to add more blue to it. It's kind of looking greenish. Trust me, I did not add any green. When you have a square canvas, if you have this on a spinner, that's really helpful. Okay. So I'm just releasing the rest of this without breaking that paint seal. That seal's still there. That paint can come up underneath. That's what you want.
I'm going to load this up more. Oh, the last of my blue here. Yeah, I think I definitely think the white chalky finish, the satin enamels together with the Floetrol and the heavy body paint is really giving a big, huge reaction. Just tons of cells there. I'm not going to use too much more of this. Pretty reactive. And put some silver in here. Turquoise. I will definitely have to look at that mixture and add more paint. That's way too thin. But with it being thin, you can really, really see it. Oops it's floating to the top. Usually thin, they say, sinks to the bottom. Don't know. Looks like it's floating to the top to me. I do want one more of that blue. And as memory serves, I didn't have to do anything for that blue. It was right at the right consistency, so let's grab my bottle and squirt some more in. And this is what's so convenient. So check your consistencies. Get your paint consistency right between all your bottles, and then you don't have to worry about putting them in separate cups. So now that these are mixed up and ready to go, I will be adjusting those consistencies because why not? We'll definitely be thinning down that Payne's Gray. And most likely I may be adding a little bit of Thalo Blue to that. Because although I like this color, I think it needs to be just a tad more on the bluer side. I really don't want to put that in next. I don't want it too pinky. I don't want to use too much more of my silver up either. Because I have plans for it on another pour. And let's see how silver and red go together. With a silver red with a bluish tint. Purple tint, I guess. Okay. I'm just going east, west, north, and south on my tilt, and then kind of trying to be a little circular without messing up my 
in here. As you can see the cells, I can see them popping up and I'm sure there's more coming. I'm just going to barely smooth this around. I'll try to pick up a little of this Payne's Gray on top to smooth it. And I am going to put just a little bit of that Payne's Gray just to drop in the center. Out of the void of darkness. Right. One drop, please. Thank you. Give that a These are little sandwich toothpicks, extra long for d'oeuvres, cheese if you're having a party. When we used to have parties, we will have them again. There we go, swirl that around. Okay. I'm going to tilt a little more. And what I'm doing is just tilting it around, bringing it back to center. This looks like a big, thick, milty cluster protecting all the little stars in the center here. Definitely going to lose some of these <clears throat> outer milky bands of cloudy looking stuff, but that's okay because it's opening up my center and it's looking pretty cool. Roll it over, it's rolling over itself. Eh, I really didn't want to lose that. Ooh, 
there's a weight of my paint at. The weight of my paint's kind of toward the bottom. Might be here. And I'll slowly go to that other corner. And you can see as I tilt just how much these cells expand, grow, and they turn from cells into plants. Come on. There we go. Don't lose too much of this. This corner real quickly. get this final corner we'll sit it down we'll take us a little look at it okay let's bring her back we'll sit this guy down for just a second <sighs> interesting they always are Gonna pop some of this paint on the corner. Okay. Some of the things that I do like is I love this. Not this by itself, but the way this broke out. I really don't lose any more of that. I like kind of that red maroony looking color. The center, how it does look like it's spitting forth a galaxy. I do like how we've got some cells here. Well, let me point over it and drop stuff. I do really like the way this shadowed here, like a swirling gas. What I don't like is some of these clusters are, look at those intestine looking shapes. When they do, I do like to break them up with a toothpick. Just kind of strike through them. Let me show you. See that white blob there at the bottom? Looks kind of like intestines or something. I'm just running my toothpick through it. Now it kind of looks like some kind of amoeba or cell or something. I sometimes just run my toothpick through it to break it up. Now there's no silicone in here. These effects are from the Floetrol, the paint, and just the mixing of the different densities of paint. And I think mostly what's really given me the cell action is the combination of the uh, chalky white paint along with the satin enamels. So although this is a little dark, it's got the pops of light in it that just kind of and I'm hoping that some of this graying will lighten up through some silver look. 
I don't see much silver there. Sometimes with silver, you don't see it till you it dries and then you turn it a certain way and you get a glint. So we will see. I think I'm going to leave this. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to torch it and see what else pops up. Because I like cells, so I have no problem with a bunch of cells popping up. And these are not silicone cells, so it should be easier to clean the canvas. I need to even. I do wish I could see more of that silver. I see the little ones that popped up. I see this graying edge. I'm hoping that dries to silver. I'm tempted to run a little silver through that, but I may do it. Just a wee bit. I'll use the end of this toothpick. Wipe it off good, wipe that off. Wipe that off. So I think I'll just do a little bit. It's a little thick. I'm just going to try to thin that with a point. Well, that kind of got rid of it. And I have to confess, my hands are not as steady as they used to be. That's what happens when you age. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to add little pops of lightness, kind of following along some of these natural swirls. When you do this stuff, you need to remember one thing, less is more. So I think that's all I'm going to do. I mean it. I'm putting it down. Biggest problem we artists have, we keep messing with it. Although, yeah, right, I do see one more thing i got to add. I'm sorry. Oh, this artist stuff.
This is looking real pretty. I don't think you can see it on camera because it's got a like a blending action going on. Cover that up. And I'm gonna just barely tilt left and right. Let's do right. And what you want to do is when you add little bits, sometimes just tilting just kind of helps to blend those in. I'm going to go under the edges and I am going to walk away. I like that. That looks like some kind of galaxy experience explosion way out there in the cosmos. This is one of my favorite pours is the galaxy pour. Also called the open cup pour. And so I am experimenting with these galaxy pours. I do love them. I do like to read a lot of science fiction. There's lately I'm reading less because I'm Pouring one down. <laughs> that is so cool. I'm pleased with that. I just love all the, here, let me wipe in my hands. And I am going to take this camera as soon as I get my hands wiped off. And I am going to hopefully not drop it in the middle of my painting. <laughs> but I am going to bring it down so you can see some of the cell action. It is so, so cool. I'm going to hit it with a, I see some stuff trying to happen over here. So I'm going to hit it with a torch over here on the side. So all of this is selling up good except for this one little spot. But if it don't, that's cool too. when I was little. A lot of old-fashioned sayings, country sayings. And one of them is, stop, you're just making bad matters worse. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna put just a little bit of this. Just a dot or two. You know what else? I'm going to take some of this gloss black on the very end of the point of the cute, on the point of the toothpick, and boom, right in the middle. Yeah, absolutely didn't do a thing. Okay. Steady as she goes. There we go. I gave them three little eyes. Because why not? Okay. They actually look like little cells in the center there. I really wanted a little more cells over here. Ooh. 
Yeah, I'm wondering if those aren't too perfect. <laughs> uh, let me just... There. They look a little more subdued now. Okay, so give one more little overall torch and really, truly off the way. Just a little bit of a peak of space where you have an opening without all these little cells, but wow, I really got the cells. No silicone, tons of cells. It must be the satin enamel and the white cloudy, the cloudy paint. Really, really nice. So I'm going to leave this because the more you mess with it, the more likely you are to ruin your painting. And I do like everything, so I'm just going to let this sit, and then I'll bring you back and show you an update on how it goes, and then eventually I'll show you the dried results. Thank you for tuning in. I hope that uh, you try this. It's all an experiment, but it is a good process. Give me a like, share this, and subscribe. It's completely free. Thank you. Bye-bye. GoPro stop recording. Hi, Carol Berglund here. So this is the dried results. And this one absolutely looks like a rose in the center. I'm going to come in for a close up. Even the very center gives a swirl like a rose. And down here I had some funny looking cells. So I took a bamboo skewer and kind of raked through the middle to give it that floral look. Since I've got this flower right there. I'm backing up. You can see I got a lot of these cells and pearls that come up around. So this one I'm going to name Dark Rose in Twilight because that's what it looks to me like. And I haven't varnished it yet and when I do it will gloss it up and really make it pretty with a nice shine. So this is my painting and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please tune in to Carol's Art Creations again. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, share, and subscribe to my channel. It's completely free, and I hope to see you again. Thank you. Bye-bye.